Well, hello everyone and welcome to our chat today. My name is Gemma New, I'm music director for the Hamilton Philharmonic Orchestra. And today we are discovering the most beautiful, enchanting piece, Surge for solo flute. And we have two magnificent musicians joining me in the chat today. We have our very own HPO principal flutist, Leslie Newman, and we have a wonderful composer whose music we want to bring to the main stage as soon as we possibly can. And this piece will be a wonderful taste for you today, Iman Habibi. We welcome Iman and Leslie to our chat. Hello, Iman and Leslie. Thank you so much for joining us today as we talk about your piece, Surge, Iman. I wonder if you could tell us a little bit about the backstory of this piece before we listen to it. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Emma. Thank you for having me here. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, so I wrote this piece in 2016 and I was a doctoral student at the University of Michigan at the time I was about to finish my um, doctorate degree in composition. And I was set to graduate in 2017. So as you can imagine, by 2016, the uh, finish line was in sight. And what I was finding really puzzling about my about a decade of time spent in academia is that, um, you know, I had gotten to know every Beethoven symphony and Beethoven sonata, but I, I really knew so little about the music of my own heritage and my own culture. And there were really so few opportunities for me to to study that. Um, and I'm not blaming this on one particular individual or institution. Uh, really our whole, it's a systemic issue. Uh, the whole industry is very Eurocentric. And so at that point, um, I was starting to realize that I had to do something about it. Um, and there was an award or a grant, I can't remember at the university uh, for um, students to kind of have their own projects and um, um, propose their own projects and, and follow it through. And so I proposed to um, study the folk music of Iran at that time by myself, and um, also to write pieces about that. And I also went to the Carnegie Mellon University to work with um, a really wonderful Iranian American composer, Reza Vali. Uh, he's a professor there and he's written a fantastic solo flute piece as well. Leslie, if you haven't checked it out, it's called Song. It's from 1980s, you might know it. It's a really difficult piece to play. But uh, yeah, so this was really kind of a project for me to get to know the folk music of my um, home country uh, in which I was born and to kind of compensate for the the part in my education that I felt was missing. But still to this day, I feel that, um, you know, um, I, I have the tools I need to analyze any kind of Western classical piece. But as soon as I start tackling a um, piece of Persian music and avas or something that involves microtones, you know, as much as that music is in my ear and the sounds of it are with me, I feel uh, really incapable of doing that kind of analysis. And it's something that I'm constantly working on. So anyways, this piece was an attempt to, for me to learn more about that. Thank you so much for sharing us uh, to us that backstory. And we're going to listen to the piece and then I hope we can dig deeper into these details. And uh, Leslie, before we listen to it, can you give us your, um, maybe how you came to discover the work um, and how you, what do you want the audience to have in mind when they listen to this performance? Sure. Well, Gemma, you were instrumental in me discovering this work because um, you brought it to my attention for one of our earlier um, Hamilton Philharmonic Orchestra Chamber concerts. And uh, as soon as you uh, you sent me the score and I had an opportunity to listen to the brilliant recording, the man um, of Meryl Neal, who I, I think that you wrote it for Meryl, is that correct? Yes. And so I listened to her premiere recording of it. And uh, it was a done deal immediately. I didn't have to think twice. It was just dazzling, exciting, driving, rhythmic, like two minutes of sheer energy. So I was just excited to play it. It's such a powerful work. And I remember, you know, there's a, there are a lot of wonderful works for solo flute. And I gave you quite a list, but I, I was glad that you chose this one because it was my favorite as well. So how about we listen to it right now? Thank you. 
Wow, that was amazing. Bravo, Leslie, and thank you, Iman, for a magnificent performance and piece. I just feel exhilarated from listening to that. <laughs> and so, Leslie, with um, the rich tone that uh, Imam writes into this piece. I wonder if you could tell us a bit about the notation or the um, way that Iman writes for the instrument in this work. Well, uh, I think one of the things that he does really brilliantly and that's so effective is that he takes, you know, this um, monophonic instrument, the flute, and he creates harmony for us with by adding in the element of the voice, and not just the voice in unison, which is something that's quite, you know, the, that we find not uncommonly in um, solo flute pieces, but um, the voice actually in harmony with the flute playing, which is a wonderful sound. Um, and so really exciting, and also bringing in the texture of the, the consonants, the vocalization, which um, adds this percussive effect that really helps with the driving energy. I think it's really exciting. It's just um, such uh, imaginative and uh, masterful writing for the flute. And man, I just, I, I really love this piece and you did such a brilliant job. Brilliant. And Iman, we were touching upon the um, the Persian influence and the Western influences, uh, and and I wondered if you could go into more detail. Now you've we've all heard it, you know. Um, describe a bit more what these influences are in this work. Absolutely. First, I'd like to thank Leslie for that incredible performance. It's it's just breathtaking. Um, and it, as a composer, it's so rewarding to have a performer give so much of themselves in a performance and uh, and to really make the piece their own. And that's that's how I feel with your performance of Serge. So thank you so much. Um, well, I, I really used the Iranian folk material as kind of a departure point. I think um, I wanted to challenge some of the stereotypes because so much of what we know today from Iranian folk music uh, is kind of this particular box that has been presented to us. And a lot of the times it's very much westernized. And I wanted to explore some aspects of the folk music that were more rhythmic. Uh, so I, I discovered a lot of really fantastic folk music in Iran that uh, used 5-8 and 7-8 rhythms. A lot of these combinations of uh, groups of two versus groups of three. And I really wanted to explore that more. And um, so um, that's that was really my departure point for this piece. And I also, you mentioned the uh, singing and playing at the same time, which by the way is incredibly difficult to do. And Leslie just pulls that off like it's it's nothing, especially when I know when you're singing a different note than what you're playing, that makes it extra challenging <laughs> as a performer. Uh, but this kind of singing and playing um, creates a sound on the flute that for me is very much resembling of the Persian neigh, which has more of an airy tone. I'm not sure if you've heard that instrument, but uh, it's kind of, you kind of put it in your mouth in the gap between your teeth in the corner. And there's a Turkish neigh and a Persian neigh. And uh, they have this really um, mournful, um, um, I don't know, a, a very sad tone to them, but it's also very airy. And so I think this kind of singing and playing uh, creates a tone resembling that. And that's why I wanted to incorporate that into the piece as well. Uh, the, the folk music of Iran is so incredibly diverse. So we kind of, we tend to think of these countries as, as being one entity, you know, as, but within Iran, we have so many different ethnicities. I grew up in Tehran. And if I drove for two hours in any one direction of the city I lived in, uh, I, I would be in an, a region that people speak a completely different dialect or language, have their own folk music, their own dancing tradition, uh, their own clothing. And so um, it, there's just so much to explore there. And so I didn't want to have this piece be about one particular uh, folk music or of one particular region, but kind of be um, all encompassing and also just use the folk music at its departure and then go from there and do its own thing and be, be its own thing. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> no, that's brilliant. Thank you, Iman. And so for the preparation of uh, this performance, Leslie, were you in contact with Iman talking about the piece or did you do like some research about the style or how, how did that come about? So it, it is an amazing thing to be able to speak to a composer about a piece that you're working on. And I absolutely got in touch with them. And as soon as I could play the piece, I mean, 
well enough that I felt I could send him sort of a rough copy without feeling completely embarrassed about it. Um, I just I just recorded it on my iPhone and sent it to a man basically asking for, you know, am I on the right track? Are there things you want done differently? And, and man, you were so generous. I mean, you took so much time um, to, to help me with details with the balancing of the, the, the flute and the voice and how his approach to um, the different rhythms, places where um, he would prefer me not to interrupt the rhythm, perhaps with the breath, um, the pacing of the guitars, and just there were so many details that he really, you really helped me with. Um, so yeah, that was great, and it gave me, you know, a lot of, uh, um, I, I suppose, confidence in being able to, like you said, try, try and make the piece my own, knowing that uh, I was, I was doing it sort of on the track of what you were. Looking for. Brilliant. There is uh, so much uh, dedication that our musicians give to a performance and Leslie you were so thorough with this process as you always are and so we thank you for that. It's very admirable and inspiring for us to work hard when we prepare for our performances. And um, Iman, uh, I, this style uh, that it, or this voice that you have in this piece is incredibly inspiring as well. I love this work. Um, have you now incorporated your um, knowledge of Persian music and the culture in other works now uh, that you began with this piece Surge? Has this journey taken you to other areas uh, in your composition? Well, I think the probably the most prominent use of Persian music that I have in my composition is actually from for an earlier piece that I wrote for choir and a vocal soloist is called Color of Freedom. And uh, that was written in response to the 2009 Iranian election, which was very controversial. And there were a lot of protests all around the world uh, about that. Uh, we won't go into the historical <laughs> background of it, but um, it was, uh, you know, it was a it was a very difficult time for a lot of Iranians. And um, uh, I wrote a piece that uses the choir very much in a Western style and language, so it's kind of harmonic singing. And then we have a Persian soloist on top of that. And I think for that piece, I was able to experiment a lot more because I allowed the Persian soloist to improvise a little bit. So I basically provided the framework for them to do what they were comfortable to do. What makes it very difficult for me to do the same thing as a Western classical composer is to notate that and not only notate it, but to also communicate uh, with the performers that I'm working with exactly what I'm looking for. So um, I, I have the kind of, uh, I, I don't want to say I have the knowledge, but I, 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 I'm experienced enough with it that I can write for microtones and I can write for the Persian Daska system. Uh, but I'm not comfortable enough that I can coach, say, a string player on how exactly to tune their instruments uh, with each other so that it sounds exactly the way that I want it to sound. And that's mm -hmm. what makes it very difficult. And for also for a lot of performers, this is a very difficult thing to do because they're not used to doing it. And it's also very difficult to program that kind of music because you're going into the context of a, a very a uh, Eurocentric program where it's all written on the 12 tone system and then you suddenly hear all these new tones and if you if you haven't done them tastefully and you haven't provided the right context for them they a lot of people might just hear that as as being out of tune being a bad performance mm -hmm. and you don't want to put your performers in that kind of a situation so it's a very tricky thing to uh, to maneuver and for a very recent piece that was just released a, few, a couple of days ago for violin and cello, uh, this was written for a really fantastic violinist from Boston Symphony Orchestra, Lucia Lin and Leo Eguchi, um, and it's co-commissioned by Lucia Lin and the Gabriela Lina Frank Creative Academy of Music. Uh, for this piece, I really tried to experiment with that, so I wrote them a lot of microtones, um, and I was trying to explain to them how to work work with that. And in the end, I decided to abandon it all. <laughs> and I went back to writing in straight 12 tone because it, it was really that challenging for me, um, not the performance aspect of it, but for me to communicate exactly what I was looking for with the performers. So I haven't done it as much as I would like to do, but it's something that I'm always pushing. And whenever I get a chance to workshop a composition, and there aren't a lot of opportunities for us as composers to do that, 
for various reasons. But whenever I get a chance to workshop, um, I'm always trying to push that when I can. It, it sounds like a challenge, but it's well worth striving for um, because the results will be such a, a profound effect on the audience. I, people are going to love this music and I, I just hope that we have the opportunity to have those workshops so that we can get it just right. And I, as Leslie said, it is a real, um, uh, it's almost relieving for a performer when we can have the composer there to talk to and to ask questions to. I have so many questions for Beethoven, it's not even funny. <laughs> and so I wondered, you know, um, Leslie, you relish in contemporary music. I've seen you perform so wonderfully uh, many composers of today and so I, I bet you have um, some thoughts on the topic of notation and the many different styles of composition um, that we have in our world of our generation and um, how you approach that and, and some of the challenges that you face as a performer. Hmm. Yes well I think the thing that feels most important above all for me is um, and it's something that um, Iman you're touching on is how a composer can notate really clearly his ideas, especially if there's something new that perhaps we're not we're not used to doing. And so, you know, we start to become more and more comfortable with um, microtonal notation. And um, so that's something that really is coming into our, you know, into um, our music more and more. But there are many times that I look at a I look at a piece that I'm working on and I really don't know what the composer wants me to do. And so I think that a really clear legend, but it, um, some, sometimes I've worked on a piece that actually refers me to a specific contemporary technique book, um, you know, so that I can do more research and things like that just seem enormously important because there's nothing sort of more demoralizing than working really hard on something when you're not sure that what you're working on is even what's um, yeah, it's a wonderful thing when when you have a chance to speak to the to composer. Like in, in yeah. the piece of and no. Yes, absolutely. And Iman, um, you have had the most wonderful career uh, and and continue to go forth with so much success and the sharing of powerful music, uh, especially in North America. And I can't wait until we can come back and um, program your orchestral works with the HPO. Um, but I wondered if you had any advice for younger composers, how did you start out and, uh, you know, what, what uh, gems of wisdom can you impart? Well, I, I'd like to think that I'm still young and maybe too young to be giving anyone advice. Um, but I think um, I, I can tell you some of the things that I wish I knew as, as, a, as a younger composer. Um, one is to um, trust your own voice and find your own thing to do. Uh, really, you know, Aiming for somebody else's career uh, nowadays um, is, is not really going to work. Um, you know, I, I see a lot of wonderfully talented composers, performers especially, who are seeing these superstars of classical music um, industry, and they're trying to be just like them. And uh, those people's jobs are already taken. They, ha they have their jobs. You know, the, the job of Long Long is already taken and Long Long holds that position. So try to find your own voice. And if there's something that you really, really like to do, um, stay true to it and keep pushing. And there, there's going to be other people out there who like doing the same thing. And um, work on your craft first and foremost. I mean, I think that's really important practice compose as much as you can uh, and write for your friends. I think that's another thing that I can say, write for people that you really, really enjoy working with. Um, I've, I've worked with a few people in my career that I haven't really enjoyed working with. And um, I think they can be very kind of destructive experiences for musicians. And, um, you know, if you find yourself in that kind of an environment, if you find yourself working with someone who is, you know, there's a power balance between the two of you and 
they're not treating you as equals and you don't have a voice, uh, just move on. You know, there are, there are so many other great people that you can work with. And I think there's nothing more rewarding than writing music for your friends and watch their career grow alongside yours and watch them advocate for your music and you advocate for their music. I think that's one of the most rewarding thing, uh, things for me. So yeah, those are a few things I can say, but beyond that, I'm not sure I have much advice to give at this point. That's very sage wisdom to share with us. Thank you, Iman. And Leslie, as a performer, I'm sure there's some things that you wish you could always share with composers and say, you know, this is very important to us as performers or, or this is encouraging to you or what, what would you share with young composers out there today? Oh, well, I, I love what Iman has said. So, I mean, I guess I'll just add to it. Yes, find your own voice. Don't try and copy what's already been done. Um, and uh, try and write in an idiomatic way. Try and know. I mean, so much of our uh, music from the past, the composers we think of that really knew how to write for each instrument so well. It's very frustrating when um, you're trying to play, you know, do a great job performing something that is just not written well for your instrument. So uh, so getting to know each instrument really well, I think is a, is a great tool for, for composers. Yeah, thank you. That's really helpful for our younger generation to come up and to write music of the future. Uh, really, thank you so much to both of you, Leslie and Ema, for joining us today to speak about Surge and music. You have been so great and we thank you very much and we hope you stay safe and well and I can't wait until we can get back into the concert hall all together. Ah, I'm seconding that for sure. And thank you, Iman, for your amazing surge. Such a joy to play. Thank you both. It, it was a pleasure to be here and it's always a pleasure to hear you play, Leslie. Thank you so much.